Hey, how about you, everybody? Welcome into this week's edition of the Auburn Live Recruiting Show. I'm your host, Jeffrey Lee, Senior Recruiting Editor of Auburn Live on 3. Today is Thursday, May the 11th, 2023, and I am joined, as I always am, by Mr. Jay Head and Mr. Cole Pinkston. How about you, fellas? How about you? How about you? How about you, fellas? All right. <laughs> hey, got a lot of news to talk about this week. Got some things maybe on the horizon that we'll maybe pro- pro- not prognosticate on. Uh, before we get to it, wanted to answer a bunch of people were in the uh, the chat before we got started. Want to know about a new home in and around Auburn, Opelika, and Lee County. We got just the person for you folks, Jessica Andrus with the Talents Group, 334-704-4442. Residential, man, she can find you a rental. Uh, uh, if you want to invest in a property, she can find it for you as well. Buying or selling in Auburn, Opelika, Lee County, give her a call. Jessica Andrews with the Talents Group, 334-704-4442. As Jay had said, she's a five-star realtor, man. Give her a call. Tell her we sent you. All right, folks. We uh, Another week, another commitment from the transfer, po- transfer portal for Hugh Freeze. Uh, Jake Thornton has just been killing it since December, I think. Uh, Jaden Muskrat is the guy we're referring to. He is a transfer from Tulsa, the second Tulsa transfer office of lineman for uh, Jake Thornton and Auburn. Philip Montgomery, I'm guessing, had a lot to do with that. Uh, but Jaden Muskrat committed to Auburn, joining Dylan Wade, who signed with Auburn back in December and went through spring. Uh, Auburn now has signed five transfer office alignment or four? I think it's just four. 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 Avery, Avery Jones and uh, Gunnar Britton. And Dylan yeah. Wade. Dylan yeah. Wade and now Jaden Muskrat. So four new offensive linemen um, from the transfer portal. Auburn will have added before summer camp begins. Jaden Muskrat from Arkansas chose Auburn over in-state Arkansas, Sam Pittman. Um, so that's a big win, in my opinion, for Auburn. Uh, fellas, y'all's thoughts on this? Hey, I don't know that either one of us or any of us – I was torn – a week ago, if somebody said, "Man, what's going on with Muskrat? Where do you think he lands?" I was like, "I don't know." Yeah, you know, I, I really don't know. Oh yeah, I was I was torn as well. Uh, 50 50 at best is what I would have said. In One fact, I, 50 at best. I'll take uh, you know, I'll take the blame for being wrong on the board the same day that he committed. I put on the board that morning. Hey, you know, we think Muskrat's going to have a decision here soon. He just wrapped up his official visit with Arkansas. If I had to guess right now, I'm leaning Arkansas is what I said. But I would have yeah. said the same thing. You know what? I'd, I would rather be wrong that way. Oh, than... for sure, dude. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Cole. Hey, the, the, he's the, all the, Auburn, baby, and then he goes somewhere else. The sooner you, you realize that in your career of doing this, you will you will be, you will have so much more success. Always. Oh, yeah. oh, man. <laughs> I learned that the hard way too many times. I still ain't learned it. <laughs> well, well, Honestly, and we joke, but it made sense, right? I mean, he's from sure. Arkansas. I think his his mother works for the university at some capacity. I don't know, you know, what she does, but they got some ties to Arkansas. So very much so. He's know. from D'Angelo Bentonville. There yeah, you know. <laughs> I like it, D'Angelo Bentonville. <laughs> but hey. that's the thing, though, right, Jay Head? I mean, he, you know, Auburn had some ties too, and sometimes you just never know with that kind of thing. <laughs> You truly never know. And what I did realize when I was doing my homework with regard to uh, to Jaden Muskrat is initially or originally he's from the state of Oklahoma. That's where oh, he's really from. Oh, okay. All right. Spent everything up until his senior year. Senior year, they moved to Arkansas. You're right. His mom is affiliated with the university in some capacity. What that is, I don't know. But I think the draw to Philip Montgomery and to Dylan Wade were the biggest factors in making him feel comfortable and connected. Sure to, you know, transferring to a new university. And obviously both had playing time available or at least the ability to compete for a starting position. Um, And Auburn was able to pick up a very versatile offensive lineman that is going to understand a facet of our scheme. And Cole, we talked about this. If you're coming into this late window, you want somebody that's got competitive reps underneath their belt and understands the objectives of what you're trying to accomplish on offense because of how short-fused it's going to be mm-hmm. with where they're going to be required to be to actually play come this fall. So he fits both of those. And in the category of versatility, he can play right tackle in a pinch. He's probably going to start on the interior of the offensive line. This helps you get your best eight in the rotation. Mm-hmm. And that's what it's all about because we all know you're going to have injuries during the course of an SEC season. It's physical, guys. Mm-hmm. We saw guys, unfortunately, lining up last year that were banged up, had no reason to be on the field other than the fact that we just didn't have the functional depth you needed to give them a breather. 
So now this is somebody, whether he's your starter or whether he's a key backup, is going to play a very big role for Auburn moving into the next year. Well, let's run down the, the the ones, the projections on the offensive line, because I, I'm just going through the transfers that we just talked about. Dylan Wade at mm-hmm. left tackle. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Avery Jones at center. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, Gunnar Britton at right tackle. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so you've got two open guard spots. You've got Jeremiah Wright and you've got Jaden Muskrat. Or, or Cam Stutz, too, right? Cam Stutz and Tate Johnson. And yes. Tate Johnson. Now, now, this is the thing that when people go, oh, you know, I don't know if we should focus so much on guard. It seems like there's a few guards. Why not add one more that could actually maybe potentially start? Yes. If, if he's an upgrade over what you have, you, you absolutely add him. I think we would all agree that Jeremiah Wright's probably got that left guard or whatever right guard, one of the guard spots. Yeah. Uh, left. I think left is where they had him playing in the in the spring. Left. So, you know, we can all agree he's got that pinned down. And then right guard is open. And if you remember last year, it was a carousel of guys constantly. And and while you go, oh, well, they had depth, you also go, somebody needs to win that job. Mm-hmm. Well, even if Muskrat doesn't win this job, the dude can play tackle at, in a pinch. Like Jay had said, the dude can play guard. He can play either side. And he's, he's proven that on the college level. A little bit different than SEC, but, you know, you take a shot on this kind of guy, 100%. I, I thought it was a good – I thought it was a really strong pickup for that reason. Besides what he's done or, you know, graded out or whatever, for that reason, it's a big deal to me. I agree, Cole. And, look, he's got competitive reps against SEC teams. It's not like he's played Little Sisters of the Poor. Tulsa plays very very good competition, you know, both in conference and in out of conference schedule. So you're talking about a guy that's seen upper tier competition that can come in and can compete right away. And then let's talk about that layer depth that we've talked about. You had to have from all different classes because you were completely out of seniors. You did not risk necessarily address your needs in two straight classes on the offensive line. So Hugh Freeze has gone out and signed junior college guys. He's now signed a transfer that's got three years left to play. You've got multiple transfers that are all one-year guys. So they've addressed layer depth across the board so that you're not overloading one class or the other. And I think that's invaluable in and of itself to make sure that you've got a competitive or a balance of offensive linemen in various classes. So to kind of cure that roster management piece that has ailed us for the last two years. Man, after all these years of of – offensive linemen and, and having issues and the woes and not being able to sign enough guys. I just can't understand why anybody would complain about having three possible right guards, mm. three that could do it, three that you would feel comfortable with. Somebody's got to win though. Jeffrey, you've done this for 20 years in your time. Have you ever seen Auburn sign nine, almost a two deep nine offensive linemen in one class? No, not even close. The, the best class that I can remember and listen, I love Hugh Nall, but you remember that uh, was it? Was it? Was it? Uh, who were the three freshmen that played that year? True freshmen yeah, was, it was it Lee Zimba, Lee Ryan Zimba, Pugh, Ryan Pugh, and and Chaz, Chaz Rams. Rams. the dirty cut man. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh, he was dirty as hell, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Hell yeah, yeah he was. That's, that's my kind of O lineman, man. I, yeah. I, I'd play O line at five foot seven. You don't think I was cutting somebody? Yeah, Chaz. Listen, Chaz had a nasty streak. Now, granted, Glenn Dorsey choke slammed him on the field that day in Baton Rouge, but. <laughs> Other than that, I, I love Chaz. Uh, yeah, he did. Uh, but I was trying to think, you know, Hugh Nall had – dude, Hugh Nall's offensive line class was uh, uh, f- fantastic. Uh, but, you know, you talk about – I was trying to see in, in a two-year period, I'm trying to think back to a two-year period where they might have signed 10 total. Right. Um, and it certainly wasn't during the transfer portal. But, you know, back then, those tubs, you know, Ben Grubbs was signing as a uh, defensive lineman. He was moving over guys and – um but no, ten. That's that's amazing. And I think somebody made a really good point on the corner, the Auburn Live on three message board. And somebody said it's it, it's it's terrible that this is what it came to. Like we had, that's what he said. We had to sign nine or ten to yeah. fix what had happened in the last four or five years. Had to recruit quality, and you had to recruit through numbers. You had to attack it two different ways, and that's that's never a position you want to be in. Uh, so Muskrat is the is he is, I think he's the fourth transfer portal signee in the spring window. He joins quarterback Peyton Thorne from Michigan State. He joins wide receiver Caleb Burton from Ohio State, Jalen McLeod from App State. Yes. Uh, to give you four, and 
you know, we were talking a little before the show, what's left for Auburn in this transfer portal window? Who's left for Auburn in this transfer portal window? I think it starts with the two wide receivers who have already visited. I mean, we know these guys are targets, right? We know Montana, mm -hmm. Lamonius Craig is a top target. We know uh, – who was the other wide receiver? Jair J Shorter. Jair Shorter is a top uh, – Is a top, we, we don't know how many they're going to take. I think they'll take both of – I thought they would. Well – uh, did you did you see the video of Hugh Freeze talking at the Hoover golf tournament? I did not. He said we'd like to have another receiver or two. Or two. Yeah. Well, if that's the case, he's got two ready to come in the door. I think Montana. Yeah, yeah. I think Absolutely. I'm not I'm not breaking any windows here by saying Montana Lamonius Craig. I, I would expect him to come in the next 48 hours, but don't hold me to it. <laughs> Jeffrey it is Saturday morning at 8:15. Uh, he's not why he's committed. Hey Jeffrey. <laughs> Mab Rider blowing you up. <laughs> uh, Montana Lamonius Craig graduates from Colorado Academics. I'm uh, not graduate. Is he graduating? Yes. I think, I think yeah. he is graduating. He's finishing up at Colorado. Um, I think it's today, Thursday. And so I'll, that, I, I'm on a high alert for him. Absolutely. Yeah. That's kind of what, what you needed to know in terms of his recruitment. Like, when does that happen? After that happens, okay, it might be game on then. Right. There's no reason for him to wait anymore. There's no other uh, excuses. I think he's been Auburn since he left. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he just wanted to finish up in Colorado, get the hell out of there, and then let folks know what's up. Uh, kind of like Alan Flanagan did at Auburn. You know, <laughs> yeah, he, right. he didn't. He never went to the transfer portal until he, after he graduated, um, and he has since entered. Okay, so you've got Montana Lamonius, Montana Lamonius Craig. We've got Jair Shorter, who, ha to our knowledge, has not been on any other visits. Not yet. I, th I think Mississippi State and Colorado were the other yeah, two schools that he right. mentioned. And that's then right. Memphis was also trying to get him in for a visit. And he – I did find this out. He visited UCF before he came to Damn. Auburn. Okay. So UCF and Gus are another team. So there's about five teams. But to me, realistically, if you read Cole's story and Cole, you talked to him. So you go ahead and jump in here, big dog. But – I don't think that you're really worried about Jair Shorter getting into this class if Auburn's ready to say yes. Yeah. That was another one of those interviews that you, you kind of had to be there. You, you needed to see his face because – As well as it read, yeah. how much better was it to be there in person well, to see it? Well, I said, look, I said, you know, this was a big visit. I said, is how, how much longer are you going to drag this out? Who else is in there? And he goes, uh eh. I was going to maybe visit Colorado and Mississippi State, but, you know, I think I'll have a decision pretty quick. Within a week. We start smiling. Within a week, yeah. He did say, like, towards the end of the week or within a week, something along that context. So, I mean, here we are sitting here towards the end of that week. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'd, I'd keep an eye open for him. I really <laughs> would. I, if there was something that came up, there's a possibility he wouldn't end up at Auburn. It's something that Auburn staff goes, I don't know if this is our guy, you know, something. Right. But I really don't think that's the case. Was there a health issue or an injury, injury issue with him? Didn't he? He was injured for a whole season, if I'm not. Two season-ending injuries. Two. Yeah. Okay. I think it was but a he, broken ankle. He was, healthy. Then, uh, he was healthy the last season. It's not, it wasn't a re as recent. Right, so. right, right. It was, it was the, the year before last and the year before that, if I'm right. not mistaken, 2021 and 2020. That's correct. So, I guess, you know, that's something worth looking into, obviously, uh, making sure everything's good there. And I think it is. I think he should be fine. He made it through a whole season last year and had a good season. And, you know, I, I just would be surprised if he didn't end up at Auburn. It would shock me a little bit for, with all the factors, you know. That I, I completely agree. I think we all expect both of those. If Auburn, you know, if Auburn wants him, both of those wide receivers are in this class. The only mm -hmm. other guy, actually, those two, nobody else has visited that we don't know what they're doing yet besides those two wide receivers, right? I mean, everybody that's visited has either committed to Auburn, signed with Auburn, or another school. Right. Except for one. <laughs> yeah, Who? I think Larry Nixon's on campus right now, correct? Larry, Larry Nixon should be either this weekend or, like, Friday, you know, Something like that. He's supposed to be there. He, yeah. he canceled last weekend. Was He went to Miami last week. He's the yes. linebacker from North Texas. My, uh, North, North Texas, Texas. Yeah. Jair Shorter's teammate. Uh, canceled, went to Miami. And I think he told you last week, Cole, that he was coming this week. Or he, he didn't even lock in a date. Yeah, he hasn't. I, I haven't heard a date on it. I was just told, hey, he's he's probably still coming. Like, expect him to still okay. visit us. And it, then you also have Isaac Ukwu. James oh, Madison I forgot about him. There you go. There you go. Who – 
I, I've been checking in with Ole Miss, the Ole Miss side of things. <laughs> and their coaching staff seems to have some, you know, some confidence with him, but so does Auburn's a little bit. They feel like they had a good visit with him. So it's just the, uh, you know, you're playing the long game now to see how many visits he's going to take and, and when he might decide. And they don't know because he made it seem like he wanted to check out a lot of places. So, um, you know, we'll see on him. I think it's an Ole Miss Auburn battle. I, I think Missouri was in there at one point, but right now I'm feeling, I'm hearing the most chatter, uh, is, as Keith would say, about Auburn and Ole Miss. Okay. All right. So we've got, let's see, the people who have visited uh, Jaya Shorter. I forgot about Isaac Ukwu, the, the edge from James Madison, I believe. Uh, Larry Nixon is on campus this weekend. Yeah, he should be. And Mark Bell. Mark Bear. Okay. Well, I, I don't consider him a transfer, but maybe we should. I guess if you want to get into the technicalities of it, <laughs> he is, but, you know, Juco, Juco market. And closer to a freshman than he is a mid year in I've Rutgers. never seen this before. Or if I have, I don't remember. Okay. There, it happened one time, and, and correct me if I'm wrong on this. Joseph Turner. Uh, Juco DB that came in like right before the season, reclassified or something, maybe from California. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong on that, but no, there was, wrong what about Jonathan Wilhite? Didn't he have something like this? Like, he, he did. showed, I think he, did. Wilhite. he was a full qualifier out of high school, did yeah. one year of junior college, and then Auburn decided, Hey, we really like you, we'll take you right now. Yeah, I think he came in May or in yeah. the summer. Uh, but anyways, Mark Hill Bell, six foot nine, three hundred and twenty-five pounds. He arrived in Auburn Thursday morning for an official visit. He will stay uh, until Friday afternoon. Um, spend two full days in Auburn. Auburn wants this kid to enroll immediately. He'll have three years of eligibility. He played last year, and I think it was uh, honorable mention All Conference uh, as a tackle. Mm -hmm. uh, and listen, I thought he was really honest with me. And I've, I've talked to him three or four times now, but I think it was one of the first two times he said, you know, Hugh Freeze offered me, but he said, you got some work to do. Basically, we don't expect you, Joe Turner. We don't expect, I, have, I forgot all about him. It was a late, he was a late addition. That's what made me think of it. That's we, the uh, time. He was by, by way of San Jose State, I thought. Maybe. I, I can't remember. But uh, he, he, he told Mark L. Bell, listen, you know, don't think that you're going to come in here and start immediately. you got a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. and, and Cole and anybody who's watched this video that know what they're doing or know what they're talking about thinks he's a, he's a developmental guy. Big yeah. time. Okay. But a developmental guy with a red shirt year left yep. to play because he played this season. To me, he's ideal for us, right? You've got a too deep littered of, of, of tackles that can contribute right now and guys that can play in a pinch. This gives you a guy that you can pair with the incoming freshman, Tyler Johnson from Louisiana. Mm. Now you've got two young oh, yeah. to kind of groom to a degree. You, there's no pressure to really play unless we have a rash of injuries. Um, but two guys that can really develop, learn the system. Jake Thornton can kind of bring them along. And then next year, you kind of see him make that ascension into the depth chart. Maybe they're in the two deep, maybe they're, you know, a tier three guy, but, Two guys you can kind of redshirt, groom together, pair them, and see what see what happens. And look, I hate to say it this way, but in the day and age of the transfer portal, if they're really not working out for you, there can be a mutual parting of ways. You know, where both guys can, yeah. both parties can figure out a way for you to go someplace that may be better suiting of your talent. So, this is a no harm, no foul. It's going to fill out your depth chart and it's going to provide you. You know, what I mean, with a with a guy that's got the ceiling to potentially one day play in the SEC, the ceiling. Now, his floor is very low right now. He's got mm -hmm. a lot of work. He's very raw. Um, but he's got a ceiling that's starter in the SEC if he hits all his benchmarks. Great reference there to Tyler Johnson, by the way. Mm. That guy didn't get talked about enough. One of the I agree. better offensive tackle frames I've seen walk through that door, and Auburn got him late from Texas Tech, but – I think the best comparison to make with Markel Bell is Cam Stutz. Yeah. The dude the dude started last year and he has a chance to be the starter at guard again, even though they just got muskrat. I mean, don't count him out. No. But he was a guy that his outlook was this guy's never gonna play at Auburn. Mm -hmm. Ever. There's no chance. And I don't know if y'all seen him walking around campus lately. Total transformation. Grown ass dude. Yep. You take the frame and he always had the frame. 
Camp Stutz always had the frame. It just took some time. Sometimes it's that way. Jack Driscoll was a great example of that from Massachusetts, a guy that was like 225 oh, yeah. pounds when he went to college. Now he plays for the Eagles, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. So you just don't know. You take the body sometimes, especially with the numbers you have. I think we talked about this, Jay Head. EJ Harris might be your only guy in that class. Correct. He is. Why not take him? I mean, it, does, it wouldn't make sense not to take him at this point. Cam Stutz from uh, like he's like from minus two point five a classification. Yeah, Killing High School is that correct? Killing Brooks. Yeah, yeah. Killing, yeah, Killing High School. I think it was in Brooks, Alabama. I just remember that office profile. It might be Killing Alabama Brooks High School. It's Maybe it was. Yeah, yeah Killing Killing Brooks. Yeah. Make, sure Bro- <laughs> make sure Brooks didn't hear that. <laughs> Daddy. Uh, all right. Hey, Zach, wanted, uh, Zach had a little uh, in a private chat here. Zach had a good question to pose to us. Uh, excluding Thorne at quarterback, who do you each of you guys think will be the most impactful transfer? Well, I'll give you my top four right now. I, I, can, I went through this. I was riding in my car today to work, and I thought, okay. Okay. And I will tell you straight up, it's Dylan Wade, mm-hmm. number one. He mm-hmm. is a pro, he's an NFL guy. Now, whether that's a guard or whether that's a tackle, mm-hmm. I have no idea. But he's an NFL dude. Mm-hmm. Number yeah. two, your Go big ahead. nose tackle from Kentucky. Yeah, great pick. The guy from Nebraska, Justin Rogers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great pick. Uh, number three, Rivaldo Fairweather. I think mm-hmm. we've got, I think he's dripping um, with NFL upside. Whether that happens for him or not, I truly don't know. But I love. I love the body. I love the upside to him. And that's probably my top three um, transfers for this cycle of guys that can be impact players for us. Um, and then McLeod. Jalen McLeod is number mm. four. I, I hear you. You're mm, talking yeah. a, pre, a premium position. You had to have a pass rusher. He's a guy with a very diverse skill set when it comes to rushing the passer. Um, and to me, beyond quarterback, if you're going to talk about your top five with your quarterback being number five, those are the top four players in this transfer class, and it's not even close. Okay. I like it. You, I, think, you think Elijah McAllister is on that second tier? He may Nobody, be, y'all aren't very high on him, are you? I, I think he's – I've heard great things about him as a leader. And, and I, have no, I have no idea what, what he – uh, his, no his leadership qualities were worth taking alone is what I'm told. He is a guy that stepped up in that locker room, which – that's something that Hugh Freeze, if you ever talk to him about building a program, he, he thinks that's just important as having, you know, 85 fantastic athletes. You got to have some of those too. And he's got that and he's going to play. Don't, don't get me wrong. Dude's going to play. He's going to play a lot of snaps and he can set the edge pretty well with his size. So nothing wrong at all with Elijah McAllister, but you see a guy like Keldrick Falk and go, well, he's got a higher ceiling than yeah. McAllister. McLeod, he's a totally different animal just because he, cause he's a speed rusher. Yep. Um, I, I'll give you my top real quick. And I, I, number one for me is going to be Dylan Wade as well. Mm-hmm. And my reasoning for that is because of Peyton Thorne. All there right. You go. We, now we talk about just taking a quarterback. That's a big deal. But if you don't have the pieces around the quarterback, what does it even matter? You know, Bo Nix, he goes to a different situation. He looks, he looks 10 times better, right? Well, maybe Peyton Thorne, even with some of the controversies he's, he's garnered at, Michigan State for Michigan State fans. You, you never know until they get on the field, but maybe these are the right pieces for him for it to all come together. A left tackle that probably goes pro. Mm-hmm. You know, so for that reason and the fact that he's a really good left tackle, I'll go with Dylan Wade, number one. Uh, number two is Jalen McLeod all day long for me. Mm. I, I really think that guy's special. I really do. I think that he is I – mean, I agree, Cole. I think he's the Jeff Holland of that – of that team you know he's the jeff holland he's the guy that can consistently get pressure and you can leave him in and do different things as well so he's number two number three for me it's got to be justin rogers yep yeah justin rogers i think he's you know he's that stump in the middle auburn's been needing so bad uh number four i'm between two guys here now i want to say revolta fairweather right I just – there's a hesit- hesitancy just to see how he's going to be used, but I do think he's going to be used correctly. It's just we don't know what to – you know, how to say that with this new staff right now. Sure. My other one I'm 
you know, it's kind of one A, one B here is Mosiah Nasili Kite. Yeah. Love Kite, whatever his name is. I love that guy. I think he's really good, man. I think he's unheralded, a guy that'll sort of slip under the radar even when he's playing well. Um, just doing some of that dirty work, taking up double teams and things, and he'll make some plays here and there. So that's that's a really good pickup too to me. And every one of those guys are starters, right? I mean, oh, yeah. is, Ikite may be a, a two deep guy that plays starter type snaps. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I would also probably factor in Austin Keys, contingent on what mm-hmm. he's able to provide you. I think he's going to sure. be a starter this fall as well. Sure. So those are all guys that that are starters that have production. You know, at the level that for which they came from, they're going to be mm-hmm. contributors for Auburn. And guess, guys, think about where this roster would be if you don't have <laughs> to do the transfer portal the way we have. Do we win four games? I was going to say three and nine. Whew. All of a yeah. sudden, that that California matchup looks tough if you don't if you don't have some of these guys. Now there you're going. Oh yeah, that one should be you know should be okay there. Who we? That would have been a it would have been a death penalty case almost, wouldn't it? I mean, I mm. would have had to recover. Mm. It that would really have been bad. Would have, that that would have been some real, and that roster would have been in bad shape, Jeff. I mean, as bad as what Tuberville took over when he came in. You remember all the JUCOs he had to restock oh. that roster with? Auburn would have had to restock with because without transfers, it's JUCOs for the next two or three years, and, 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 and while your freshmen, your first class freshmen, are mm. getting developed. So you, it puts you about – the transfer portal, fast-forward at Auburn – fast-forward at Hugh Freeze's success, potential success at Auburn, at least two years. At least two years. Yeah. yeah it Go ahead, Cole. I'm sorry. No, that's all. It did. It, I mean, it hit at the right time, did it not? Yeah. It, it really did. And who knows what will happen with the transfer portal moving forward, but I'm glad it was in place because you think about how lucky Tuberville had to get. He hit on Ben Leard, who was benched, completely forgotten about, and then you get Rudy Johnson in that second class. Huh. And that yeah. was – Rudy wasn't even being highly recruited by anyone. This was – you know I mean? He was a junior college All-American, but it wasn't like he was picking from a who's who list. Cole, are you old enough or young enough or old enough? Do you know how good Rudy Johnson was? I certainly do, yeah. Of course, it's mostly by way of highlights. But <laughs> I, <laughs> I know how good it was. That, that run he had against Wyoming, I believe it was, is one of the yes. greatest runs I've ever seen. Wasn't that the opening – wasn't that the season opener? I think so. I, Rudy you know, Johnson! Rudy Johnson! Yes. I, well, I also watched him when he played for the Bengals. I mean, I got to watch him, you know, then too. Yeah. He was something else now. He was something else at Auburn. He was – he was he, he won probably three games that year by himself. Yeah. I agree. Um, and then you had Ben and you had Ronnie Daniels. Yes. And and that was kind of your – And Ronnie was Juco. Yeah. Then minor league baseball player. Went to junior college and we – and Tuberville hit on that one. Well, let's let's not act like Auburn hadn't done well with JUCOs and transfers in the past. I mean, look at Cam Newton and Nick Fairley on that 2010 team. What what would you be without those two? What would you be without Nick Marshall in 2013? Nick Marshall, yeah, yeah, Duke Williams that was yeah. on the 2014 team that was really good. Think about how that team finishes if Jonathan Wallace or Kyle Frazier mm. in the majority of your snaps that year. Hey, let's don't forget a uh, Bull a Toro. Oh. oh, El Toro, yeah. I did it for you, Charlie. Yeah, Charlie. <laughs> oh, Charlie. My mama. Hey, my mama. <laughs> oh, that's my dog now. Uh, let's see. Um, well, I'll tell you what. We're shifting gears now. We've been over ju- uh, transfers. We've been a little juco with her, with Marco Markel Bell. I'm sure there's going to be some more uh, jucos to track here later this summer. Uh, Cole, you uh, reconvene with uh, with old, old Neebs, I hear. Yes, sir. Uh, me, me, and a uh, familiar face, an old friend, whatever you want to call him, old Keith, got together. He needed to check on some guys in the Birmingham area. I did as well. Auburn's pretty heavy in that market there, so um, we rode up and hit a few schools. Um, first stop, Hoover, Hoover High. Uh, Bradley Shaw is is the main guy there. It's also a 2026 receiver who Auburn has offered, and he is actually Jameis Winston's little brother. His name is Jonah Winston. Keep, keep him in your mind for later. But uh, Bradley Shaw, you know, we kind of figured out that day that Florida, who I was told was sort of a factor for him, is not really a factor anymore. Seems to be a three-team race, um, Georgia, Auburn, Notre Dame. That's what it sounds like. 
Uh, Bradley's going to be at Big Cat Weekend. He's going to take an official visit. So some things working for Auburn there for sure. Um, from there, we popped over to Clay Chopville High School, uh, home of DJ Barber, Mario Craver, Jaquan McCroy, who we've, you know, Jeffrey, you sort of figured out, hey, Auburn's really not in this anymore, whether that be on Auburn's side or his side, you know, that the case is he, he's, it's, don't count on him with Auburn. I actually put in a prediction for him to go to Oregon because uh, I did chat with him a little bit, and it sounds like Oregon is standing out the most, and he likes the idea of going there. I chatted uh, indirectly with DJ Barber and some other people there, you know, get the feel. Sounds like sounds like Auburn's got the best shot of anybody, even though Arkansas is a real threat. T. Will, can't count him out, right? We know this. He yeah, he just – uh, he signed oh, – what's his name? Sure did. Who uh, – oh, Jaheim uh, Thomas, is that who you're talking yes. about? Yes. From Cincinnati. Well, I just look at all the guys he signed at Auburn, and when he locked in on a guy – you know, there was a great chance he was fixing to get him. He's uh, coming for Barber. He absolutely is. And, and I don't think you should oh, count yeah. out Arkansas at all. I mean, there's still a chance that Arkansas could win out there. But the consensus right now seems to be, hey, first of all, you got your cousin at Auburn who is telling you how awesome of a decision he made in transferring from Ole Miss to Auburn. That's Austin Keys. Um, that's – that's huge for DJ Barber, I think. And he sort of downplayed it a little bit last time, but I think it's a big deal after spending a weekend with him in Auburn. So, uh, and then Mario Craver, you know, between Florida and Auburn, we're not sure who's pushing harder. He says Auburn is. Uh, Florida seems to be on the fence here and there, and then they love him, then they don't. It's kind of the same with Auburn. It's sort of an interesting situation, but, um, I, you know, I almost wonder if Auburn getting Caleb Burton from Ohio State hurts Mario Craver's chances a little bit. Similar type player, also same amount of years, technically, right? He has four left. Four. And I guess Craver has five. Yeah, Craver. Would yeah, he would have five right coming here. in, but you know, these days and you can you can leave in three or you can leave when you get there if you want with the portal. So Thornton uh, is, uh, not Thornton. Uh what's his name? Burton is like a twenty twenty three class wide receiver. He's a true yep. freshman this year. Yep. Yep. So does that hurt Craver? Maybe. Uh, it might. We'll see how that plays out. But um, It's amazing, man. Is it only at Auburn that that happens? Like, oh, they, they got a guy in my position, so I'm looking elsewhere. You may yeah, right. This, if that were the case with those well, – Georgia and Alabama would never sign people. No, you know, I, I think it's more about having so many similar body types that maybe Hugh Freeze and Philip Montgomery look – to bring in guys that have a different diverse skill set. I don't think it's going to Im impact the overall numbers more no. than it's going to impact the type of receivers I think they're going to try to recruit. And you just have so many different slot guys on the roster right now that I think it's probably even going to further exacerbate the push to get some bigger outside wide receivers. Yeah. I think Kirby Smart said during that Hoover tournament, which I have to agree with him here, he said, you know, when the NFL's taking guys, they don't necessarily look at, if the guy played t 10 snaps a game when he was a freshman, it's more so what you did later in your career as a starter. You know, when you become a starter and you earn that spot, said, so we'll play 10 snaps a game as a freshman, but really the NFL is not looking at, at that. They're, they don't care about that part. So if you're worried about making the NFL, don't worry about that. You know, <laughs> thought it was a pretty good point. But, um, you know, Auburn's trying to get to that same roster situation right now, and it's going to take a little while. Uh, but does does Caleb Burton hurt Craver there? I, I don't know for sure either way, but we'll see. Um, and then from there we went to uh, where did we go? Parker, Ooh. Parker High School. That would be home of Cat Brown. Yeah, that's exactly who I was thinking of, Jeffrey. <laughs> Cat Cat Brown. Cat Brown is legendary Parker basketball coach that I was oh, honored, really? honored to have played against. Big time dude. Yeah, anybody that's in or around Parker or Birmingham over that way is uh, very familiar with Cat Brown. RIP, okay. big dog. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, they got several players, man. They got uh, five-star. He's the number four player for on three mm. in the country in next year's class. That's Naeem Offord, who basically oh, – yeah. Played, he plays receiver in DB, but Auburn likes him corner safety, whatever they can get him as. Um, Is he a five-star somewhere? Five-star, yeah. Jeez, Louise! I remember. I, I I remember last year 
this was uh, under Har- Harson. He was there with uh, – I think he was there with Jeremiah. And I remember he got offered, and his last name was offered. I didn't know who he was. Yeah. I never heard of I think it was the Mercer game, the opening game. Was it? Of the yeah. Yeah. He's like, yeah, man, this kid just got offered. I was like, oh, really? What's his last name? No, offered. It's his name. Yeah. <laughs> offered. Like, offered got offered. Okay, cool. <laughs> There's my headline. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, right. So, you know, we talked – of course, these are 2025 20, guys, so you don't know where they're leaning quite yet. But Auburn's in the mix, you think. The big guy there, Jeremiah Beeman, four-star defensive lineman. Uh, you know, I've put several notes on the board about him on Thursday. I'm just not feeling it, guys. I just don't – I don't feel that one uh, happening for Auburn. I, maybe Auburn stays in it till the end. I don't – I wouldn't doubt that at all, but I really think it's – he's Bama's to lose. I, I tend to agree. And when I did my mock class, I guess about two or three weeks back, he was not projected to Auburn for that pure reason. I, I think that Alabama is just going to be really hard to beat there. And our job is more or less to kind of read tea leaves, right, and, and make projections mm-hmm. and, and kind of try to see the forest for the trees. And yeah. that's just one of those as of today. I mean, maybe the right. end changes between now and the end of July. Oh, yeah, it could. But as of today, that's that's just going to be a hard one to beat, you know, with yeah. regard to Auburn beating Alabama. But then, well, that doesn't mean there aren't other guys that Auburn's definitely in on that fill that same position. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, uh, I mean, I was my gut was wrong on Jaden Muskrat going to Arkansas. He ends up at Auburn. Like, Well, you really didn't have anything, to, to be fair. I mean, you're talking about a guy who was, you know, did no media whatsoever. Yeah, he didn't. He, he, he sent, a, you know, a, a sentence or two. Uh, I think he sent a sentence or two to Jason Caldwell on Twitter. Um, yep. And told me to kick rocks. <laughs> <laughs> so, we had no idea what was going on. Right. No, right. he took two OVs and gave no quotes to anyone. So reading the tea leaves, Cole, kid from Arkansas who Arkansas wants, who Sam Pittman yeah. wants, and you know he's not doing any interviews. I mean, we said 50-50, and if you had to ask me, I'd probably guess Arkansas. I thought that was pretty spot sure. on, sure. being honest. Yeah, like I said, would much rather be wrong that way. There but, you go. Uh, so, uh, you know, I hope I'm wrong that way about Jeremiah Beeman, too. We'll see how that plays out. You never know in the NIL world. You know, a big, you know, something big happens in, in NIL for Auburn, and he's right back in with Auburn. So, for right now, as it stands today, I really think Bama's sort of the leader there with Georgia and Clemson, and Auburn sort of being in the second tier altogether. That's my read on it. Uh, he says good things about Auburn. You know, he trains with uh, Jeffrey Emba, who now is going to Purdue, uh, Jason mm-hmm. Jones, and Anichi Sledge. They all train together like. Three, four, three or four times a week. So under Coach L, that's his name. Yep. Coach, Coach L. L. Yep, good dude. Um, or used to. I, I'm, I'm sure when they get in season, they can't do it as much. Right, but right. he he does train with them and has a great relationship with Jeremy Garrett. I would not uh, forget about him at all, but I just think it's just going to be tough for Auburn on that one. Okay. And then what I considered was probably the biggest takeaway from the whole trip. Um, we went to Tuscaloosa County and got Kevin Riley. Exactly. who I got to watch work out, and, boy, he's he's natural. He mm-hmm. is a natural athlete. Um, you know, I'm, obviously, Alabama is in the driver's seat. They almost dictate what he's going to do to an there a, you go. extent. But at the same time, this guy loves Cadillac Williams, guys. Mm-hmm. And he's honed in on him. Now that he's got Jamarian Burnett in the boat, not only is Cadillac Williams honed in on Kevin Riley, he's got – He's got Fat Burnett on him, too. And I wanted to make that clear when I put the story out that Fat Burnett is a part of this recruitment now and wants him in the same backfield. They want to be together. They've talked about it. It's something that they, that they consider, right? Um, so I think Auburn's in play for him. I actually do because I don't 100% know what Alabama's going to do with him. They have so many options at running back all these, you know, every year. They just signed two of the two top running backs in the last class. There's some factors at play that could keep him from going to Alabama, but it's still going to be tough to beat Alabama. Don't get me wrong. If there's anybody that can do it, here we are again in this same boat, it's Auburn. 100%. That's what Perry Thompson said when he left his his visit. It's either Auburn or Alabama for me. It's the same for Kevin Riley. There's no doubt. Okay. And, and I, I firmly believe this just listening to you, but – he he go to Alabama if Alabama wants him. He'll go to yeah. Auburn if Alabama doesn't. I think so. Yeah, I hear, I hear. Hey man, uh, a class of of Fat Burnett and Kevin Riley would be something to celebrate. 
Clemson. Hey, I, I, if I'm an Auburn guy, I take a, I take a class full of Alabama rejects. Oh man, Jeffrey, one of my all-time favorite stories is your report on Tank Bigsby and how Georgia slow played Tank because Tank wanted to go to Georgia, but once he made that commitment and Georgia tried to circle back around, he said, "Kick rocks, brother." <laughs> Deuces. Sometimes that matters. Sometimes it, these guys pick up on that. Sometimes they don't. It does. And so maybe we'll be maybe it'll be beneficial for us for that to happen with Kevin Riley. Um, like you said, you, you gotta give you tip your hat to Alabama here, but but it pays to be second place sometimes. And it sure. you know what I mean that's why you stay on these guys because you don't exactly know what's gonna happen with the other team's board. Yeah, and that's not to say that Alabama's not pushing for them. They very well may be. I know he visited there several times during the spring. He went to practice mm-hmm. two or three times. They may say, hey, look, you're our number one guy. If that's the case, you almost look at it as, wow, Auburn's keeping him from committing right now. That could be the case. So, you know, we talk well, about Auburn being in this situation. I almost feel the same way about D.J. Barber. If I'm an Arkansas guy, I'm going yep. – I mean, hey, listen. The only way we're going to get D.J. Barber is if Auburn doesn't push for him. Mm. There you go. And Auburn's the same way with with Kevin Riley and maybe uh, a couple of others. But again, <clears throat> when you're when you're taking rejects and not just rejects, but like second tier guys off of Alabama's board and off of Georgia's board, they're usually tier one guys for everybody else. Correct. Correct. And they they could be tier one guys for them as well. They just didn't have the right. Room. Yeah, there you go. They could have five tier one guys at that spot, and they got two of them. Well, there's three tier one guys still left. One of them. You get yeah. one of those guys. You're you're uh, you're doing. And, it right. and if you're an Auburn fan, there's nothing better than beating Bama with a guy that they didn't want, right? <sighs> I mean, Corey Grant comes out. I don't know if they didn't want him, but you know they weren't using him as much, so he transferred to Auburn and he hurt Alabama. That was, the, that was the OG transfer right there. Was yeah, it? right. That's right. back when you had to sit out a year. Yeah, one hundred percent it was. He sure did sit out a year. And yeah. Corey Grant had to play as a walk on. He couldn't even have a scholarship. That's right. That year. That's crazy. Couldn't even have a scholar had to pay for that first year. You imagine oh. somebody taking that route today? That would be a headline. That'd be a news story. It wouldn't. They'd have an NIL check covering their yeah, right. guaranteed. Just to just to watch, you know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, before we get to how about you, man, Jay Head, I, I skipped over something. I want you to hit on numbers, scholarship numbers. Eighty-five is your limit. Everybody likes to keep track of this best we can. We know it's uh it's an, an exact science, but. You do the best job of, of keeping up with uh, Circa. Sure. So right now we're at 78 scholarships. Now they could choose to roll over Jake LeVon and Sean Jackson's scholarship from this previous year, which will put you at 80. I don't think they've made a decision there as to how they're going to necessarily handle that. But as of today, you're at 78. So that leaves you with room to take seven more guys. Um, I feel pretty comfortable saying I think Sean's going to be on scholarship, but we'll see how it all shakes itself out. But we just discussed, let's see, one, two, three, four, five more guys that are still on the board, okay, that we know about. There potentially could be a safety or two that are in the mix. Sure. I don't think we necessarily throw that name out because we haven't, we can't confirm actual interest or an offer to this point. But I know that they are hunting a DB. That's, that's not a secret. If they can find the right one, they're going to take them. So maybe you've got five to six more guys on the board. Do you get all those? Maybe, maybe not. So we'll see. But Hugh Freeze being able to add the amount of players that he's added in this class. He's already added more transfers than I thought he was capable of taking. Mm -hmm. He landed 12 in the early signing period, another four in this signing period. So you're at 16 transfers already. A class of 21 signees between December in the December uh, portion of it. So you've turned over at this point 37 spots on your roster. 37. That's easily over a quarter. He's That's almost easy. replaced 20% of the roster via the transfer portal. Correct. 20% of the roster via the transfer portal. And if they get to 20, they will have eclipsed that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's impressive. So, so seven max. That's if uh, Levant and Sean Jackson aren't on scholarship. If both right. of those guys continue to stay on scholarship, five max. And I don't know if you said this, but that's a lot more. That that's a lot more to add, right? Five guys. That's a lot more. That would be you going a hundred percent down your right. board right now. That's that's what that would be. Getting that would, everybody that's left. Exactly. That would be Uku. That would be Markel Bell, Jair Shorter, MLC. Larry Nixon, 
Hmm. You know what I mean? That's that's you landing all five of those. Yeah. And we all know that recruiting is fluid, and and you know there are other people that are in this competition. Now, would I love the stuff Mario Cristobal in a locker over Larry Nixon? Absolutely. But <laughs> oh yeah, Larry Nixon. We need to put him on. I, I'm, I'm. But oh, I had him on here. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. That's still going to be stiff competition, right? You know what I mean? It's it's not a slam dunk that you're going to beat Mississippi State for Markel Bell. You know, he's a Mississippi kid, goes to a Mississippi junior college. I think Mississippi State is squarely in that competition. So while I think we feel very comfortable about the two wide receivers, I think it's very fluid on everybody else that's on the board right now. Mm-hmm. I think that's yeah. fair. Yeah, and if I they don't sign each, if they don't sign each number, it won't be, you know, I think they'll be okay carrying one or two over, right? Absolutely. That just gives you more if you get to what 83 scholarship guys and you put two walk-ons on scholarship for a year, you know what I mean? All that does is help you when it comes to talent acquisition the following season because you freed yourself up some spots. I honestly don't believe you're going to be playing 83 scholarship guys in a season. Yeah. Hey, and let's don't forget either, man, um, in this day and age with this NIL, these walk-ons, there's NIL. Yeah. Um, I, I expect Auburn to add a kicker in this 2024 class, oh, yeah. but I don't think it'll be a, 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 as a scholarship guy. Mm-mm. You know, I, I, they can sign an NIL deal for 35000 a year, which is enough to pay for his tuition. So he's mm-hmm. basically a scholarship that's not counting as a scholarship. Correct. Um, there are ways around this. But uh, so 78 right now, 80 if you count the two walk ons or former walk ons. And then so anywhere from five to seven spots left. Got it. Anywhere from five to seven spots. Hey, that's a great show, man. Transfer portal, a little Juco talk in there, high school, in state recruiting, um, some numbers. And uh, we'll have uh, uh, updates on. Markel Barrel and Larry Nixon when they leave this weekend, and, and we'll be tracking anything else that might pop up over the next 48 hours. Uh, fantastic week on the corner, Auburn Live message board. It was fantastic. Yes. Shannon Terry tweeted about it Thursday morning that we uh, – our subscribers, man, and, and it's 90% them, the third most traffic in the entire On3 network. And the On3 network is very difficult when you've got KSR, Kentucky Sports Radio, uh, War Chant, you've got all these huge Texas sites, monster sites. And and our community was active as anybody, the third most active uh, message board. And it's fantastic, man. It's so good. I mean, you've got really good discussions. You've got some bozos in there, and I bozo sometimes myself. <laughs> <laughs> but mo- for the most part, man, and I'm talking 65% of the message board is pretty damn good and for a yeah. message board that's incredible mm-hmm. when 65 percent of this quality content that's incredible for a message board especially an auburn message board i mean let's be honest <laughs> 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 hey we we ain't the sharpest tools in the shed i'm gonna tell you uh <laughs> neither is a lot of others but hey man well i'm telling you I, I, we appreciate everybody and uh that's why i've got 18 how about you today I hate to tell you, Jeffrey, you're going to have to do a bunch of ats because I got a bunch myself. All right. All right. All right. Jay, head, you, uh, I got you, one. You limping in. You limping in. I, I'm limping <laughs> in. Hey, I'll have more uh, this coming Sunday, but Mandingo Warrior. Good one. I, I think like he, it. uh, I think that might be his second in a while, bro. I think so. Not for me, but I think his second. I think he got, I think, one I, I, think I had him last week. All right. All right. All right, Mr. Pinkston. Well, for everything you just said, I think there's several guys, and I'm going to miss a few of them. I, I hate to do that, but there's some guys that I know have been there with us for a long time, and they help us with that traffic, mm. and they're a big reason for it. Tyler Justice. Mm. Stats don't matter. Mm-hmm. You've got Rice. Say what you want. He's helping us, man. He's he's a big asset to Auburn Live is Rice. I'll go with Big Sexy for AU. This week, oh. because he thinks we have beef, and I don't know why we don't, man. I, I love you. I love you. <laughs> so I'll, I'll go with those four, and then I'm going to go with Austin Faison, uh, Proud seventy six AU, and Queen Ween. Queen Ween. Hey, Austin was what? Who is Austin? It's Austin Faison. Is how I'm saying. It. It's F A I S O N. F A I S O N. 
That's close enough. Yeah. Austin Faison. Austin F- Faison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. <laughs> Good stuff, man. I've got a uh, – believe it or not. Oh, that was that was Jay Hiz. I wrote my Ningo Warrior down, and I was like, "Oh, did I do that too?" No, it's Jay Hiz. <laughs> <laughs> How about uh, I got at Sauls S O W L S all caps? Mm-hmm. So he's screaming. It's like Sauls. That's his name <laughs> at Sauls all caps. Really mad guy. Really loud. I believe too. he's called into the show. <laughs> Have they? Sauls. I think so, he's been yeah. around, dude. I, I, I've known Sauls for a long time, or known of him. You know. Uh, How about at Beans eighty nine? How about at Chattanooga Tiger man? Listen. Man, it was so funny. Somebody posted something. There was a cross-eyed person or like a meme or something, and people just came in. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> Some of the responses, I, could, I couldn't even finish the three. I had to close it. <laughs> oh, my God. Chattanooga Tiger was all up in that one, man. I don't. I can't remember what he did, but it was hilarious. It was, it was, it was like Nick Cannon. Uh, <laughs> at Buzz seventy three forty two, man. How about you, at Buzz? How about at Scott V? How about at Scrooge McHud, McChud, McHud? At the D the Questioner at Triple J five hundred. How about you, fellas? How about uh, at uh, How about you at Funny Main is weak. Oh yeah, he, he, he had a meme. Yeah. The bald one, or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> mm, funny man was strong that day. How about a uh, app at Fap Blaster? <laughs> Fap, what does that mean? <laughs> it's like uh, Beetlejuice. If you say it three times, the <laughs> Fap, Fap, Fap. I don't know what that means. <laughs> at Bug Mac, at Bug Mac. How about you, big dog? Uh, how about you to uh, the one misspelled the T H T E H one. Uh, how about you, uh, Ground 066? How about you, E-Moss? E-Moss mm. called into the show. Uh, E-Moss. Yes, he I did. Think I think it's Eric Moss from Sheffield, if I remember correctly. Make that times two, please. Okay, E-Moss, big dog. He's the one that said he heard the voice of an angel on the Boomo Bug show, and it was mine. So, I got I to give him one. <laughs> oh, me. How about at Honky Hipster? <laughs> mm. Oh, he posted, uh, get out of the left lane, you stupid son of a gun. <laughs> That video? Yeah, know, how yeah, about, yeah. How about you? How about you? Yeah, okay. Uh, how about you? War Valencia? War Valenta? Okay. I think that's right. I think it's Valenta. Yeah, yeah. All right. Hey, at Bristol Tiger, how about you, big dog? And at Special, how about you? To uh, At Carter Malden. Yeah. I got one more. And okay. I don't know his name because I was looking through. So at Johnny Knox 07. Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. sure. That meme of you as Axel Rose, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he made the Mount Rush board. You see him make the Mount Rush board? Every rose has its thorn. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, fantastic, man. Fantastic week of cornering. Uh, fantastic community, man. We appreciate everybody. We really do. Um, fantastic. fantastic. I'm, re- I'm very proud of the message board and and what it's become, what it has become, and what it's going to become. Well, really good stuff, man. we got great uh, subscribers. We really appreciate it. Hey, and listen, if you're not a subscriber right now, it's a perfect opportunity. You can get in for six months for 30 bucks, uh, $29.99 for the next six months. I think that's, what, five bucks a month. Look in your, look in your uh, couch cushions, and you can find that much change. Uh, so less uh, a little bit, almost, no, it's, gas has come down. It's about $3 a gallon now. Two eighty four at Bucky's. All right. Oh, hey, Is hey, it really? Hey, they don't. Add, they don't. Add, they don't <laughs> advertise. Where? Where's the sign? I don't see the gas prices anywhere. Oh, I know they don't show it. You yeah, what's up with that? The I, if they do, I don't know where to look. I mean, it's yeah. such a, I was. Such a I was like, oh, that's a, that's a trap, big dog. I ain't stopping there. Thought he was gonna get. Just, go ahead and get you in there. Yeah. They, yeah, they get you in there with the um with the uh the uh the, uh, the pork. Uh, what's it called? The brisket. The brisket the brisket. Yeah, and then it's like six dollars a gallon. They're not dependent on on their gas money like some gas stations. They got a lot of things going there. So, okay, all right, yeah. all right, fantastic show, fellas. Appreciate y'all, man. Appreciate their uh, appreciate everybody listening, man. We appreciate everybody watching. We will be back Sunday night, six thirty p.m. Central Time for the call in show. Until then, man, for J Head, for Pink, for Zach in the back. I'm Jeffrey Lee, man. Y'all stab that left lane. See ya.